Uh, hi everyone, I'm uh, Robin. I'm actually from um, an NGO or a non-profit organization called On Wheels. And in 2016, um, we made our first app. Um, and our app uh, was just based on a kind of private server. And uh, But two years ago, we um, wanted to make the switch to a more open source uh, platform. And after a lot of talks uh, with the community, uh, we decided on working uh, with OpenStreetMap. And um, last year, we started developing our uh, new app, which is all based, all the data is based on OpenStreetMap. And I'm going to uh, explain a little bit uh, where we are um, and maybe at the end how you can help us also out. <clears throat> so mainly what we do is uh, we work around accessibility information for wheelchair users and also less mobile people. But through the years we also saw because we, um, we gather a little bit uh, in a different way our data uh, in the meaning that we gather very objective data about the door width of the entrance or how many steps there are. Is there an accessible toilet? What's the door width of the toilet? How many space do we have in front of the toilet, next to the toilet? Um, like other apps uh, just say, okay, this place is accessible or it's not accessible, or maybe you can get in with some help, uh, but that's very difficult um to show for uh wheelchair users uh even for one person to say this is accessible for you um and in general for all wheelchair users to say this is accessible for everyone it's it's impossible um, so if you look at europe um there's an estimate of five million people uh using a wheelchair um, and one in six uh, persons have like uh, problems with reduced mobility. So it's it's a bigger group than everyone thinks. Um, we also saw through the years that a lot of uh, parents with buggies also use our app, or even uh, people who like to know where there's a toilet that that is on the ground floor instead of accessible by stairs, for instance. So because we gather a lot of objective data, we see that. It's very interesting for other people too. So working with OpenStreetMap to make this ID broader is like the perfect uh, next step for us. So a little bit about our new app. So for, for us, um, it's very uh, important um, that this app is very user-friendly. Our new app is also, we also worked a lot around uh, accessibility usability for uh, blind people or people with bad vision, color blindness. So we try to broaden our uh, user group and to make it a little bit more accessible for everyone. Um, I think the main things with our app, what you can do is you can uh, view data. So you can just say, oh, where there's a restaurant, where's a cafe, where can I park? But you can also, um, change data. Um, for instance, if you see, ah, this door width um, is measured in 2016, but it's they changed they changed the entrance. It's not exactly like this. With the app, you can actually uh, change uh, wrong data. Um, and the other thing is that um, what we also did is uh, collect new data, um, but with OpenStreetMap. Um, this this part is going to be a little bit uh, smaller, lesser than than before because now we just import all the data, existing data about what is existing about the buildings in OpenStreetMap, and we just add our accessibility data to it. So this is kind of a little bit how the app. Uh, looks or where we are now, it's not finished yet, um, but we're, <laughs> we're quite close now. Um, so the general thing is that when you open the app, 
the main thing is that you have uh, a map with different categories. For instance, um, so we, we decided to make kind of categories. For instance, a restaurant is a category or a cafe or parking spots um, or toilets. Um, <clears throat> and we also added a lot of new things uh, like public transport, train stations, these kind of things. Um, and then, um, so you have the map. Um, and what you can do, like you can just filter here. You can say, oh, I only want to see cafes or restaurants and all the rest I don't want to see. So that's, you can, uh, there's so many data and as a user you can decide what you want to see. And then if you see an interesting uh, place, you can just click on it and then you get the accessibility information about it. So what we want to do is first you see, uh, for instance, here it's a shop, uh, it says it's a supermarket. Um, we also have the opening hours, so that's something new that we are able to, with the connection with OpenStreetMap data, we couldn't have that before. Um, but now we can also add general information about the spot, which is also really interesting for our users. And then the idea here with the icons is that you can quickly see that there is an accessible toilet, there's an accessible elevator, and there's a baby changing spot. So depending on what kind of, kind of those are kind of very, uh, like filters that you can see um, very quickly uh, if you browse uh, through it. And then we also have pictures. For now, the pictures are stored on our own server. Um, but there's a lot of interesting maybe connections we can do, for instance, mapillary or other uh, things. Uh, but that's, for now, <laughs> that wasn't possible. Um, and then after that, you can just uh, see all the information uh, about the entrance. What's, what is the door with? Is there like a ramp? Uh, how many stairs are there? Uh, so this is just all the detailed information that is available uh, around that. Uh, place and maybe I'll switch to this um, and then a very important uh, thing for us is that like I said in the beginning it's very hard to say for a wheelchair user this is accessible so how did we solve this problem is that we uh, give our users the possibility to say, um, I'm a wheelchair user, and then they can just say what's the width of their wheelchair, how the height they can cross, um, and then the app will only show you on the map. So if you activate that, it will only show you all the, inf all the, the locations which are accessible for that specific profile. So if you say, like my colleague Joke, she has three different wheelchairs, with all the different dimensions. Um, and also it depends on how she feels. Sometimes she feels really good. So she said, oh, okay, maybe three centimeters I can cross with my manual wheelchair. And then the other day she's like very tired. So she can only do like maybe one centimeter or just flat. So um, yeah, that's, that's how we kind of um, solve uh, the problem. Um, and that's only possible by collecting very objective data about the, the door, like the, the entrance, the width of the entrance, the height of what's the difference between outside, inside. Um, and then what we also added, so this was already in our last uh, app, but what we also added are some new profiles. Um, and one is the parking profile. So the idea here is that if you um, if you are looking for parking spots, you can just uh, say, okay, my car is this, or I need this kind of space for parking um, and getting out. So you can just add the width and uh, the length of the parking place you need. And because we all the parking spots we add are always with the width, always with the length, you can. Uh, you can just also filter with that profile. 
So the app will only show you the parking spots which are uh, big enough or bigger than what you need. Yes. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, and then another one, uh, but this one uh, is, we added already this one, but this one will be more worked on in the future. And the idea is here is that this is kind of, we call it a biking or maybe a walking profile. And the idea here is, for instance, if we, so a lot of people are starting to collect data about uh, sidewalks um, or about um, bike lanes. And if you also add the width of that, what's the underground, how can you cross, for instance, crossings, then the idea is that you can also um, use that profile and then it will show you if there's an obstacle, for instance, if there's like two, um, if the if you have space enough to cross somewhere, but we don't. There's not that much data now in OpenStreetMap, and for us, so the idea is that we're going to work further on that, um, and also, um, <clears throat> what we also added the last couple of months um, is that for now. In our previous app, what you had to do is just you gave us an email address and everyone could just edit and add new things. Um, we kind of did a man manual check after that before we put it online but <laughs> because we are getting more questions around from cities all in Europe. It's not, I mean, if you add like thousands of new locations, it's impossible to uh, manually check that. So what we did is actually when you, if you just want to use view information, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to give any information. Um, but if you want to start editing information or adding new information, which will be directly stored in OpenStreetMap, so we edit directly OpenStreetMap data. Uh, this is kind of um, to make sure <laughs> that, so you have to, make sure that the data is correctly in it. So you just have to, for that part to add it, you have to have a, an OSM login. But you can just directly go in your profile, say you can log in with if you already have one, or you can just make a new one. Um, so it's also for data protection that we decided, otherwise as a nonprofit, we have to do all the legal things. And by doing that, we just uh, kind of uh, build or uh, use uh, all the legal and, and personal uh, things of that. Um, and also the idea is in the future that with this kind of personal profile, we can add more interesting things that people can save their favorite locations, for instance, or they make can make a trip. So on the web app, they can just look for some interesting uh, places if they want to visit Antwerp. Um, they can save them in a trip, for instance, and then when they're in Antwerp, they just open the app, and when they're logged in, they can see all their favorite trips and they can put it. So that's kind of also the ID with uh, kind of a personal account. And then another thing, which is um, we kind of already had that a little bit in our last app, but this one we're going to uh, really enhance that, as we call those uh, roll routes. Um, and roll routes are wheelchair accessible, um, just walk or, or driving uh, places. Um, and here we work together with uh, Rutu. I don't know if you guys know Rutu. That's another app, uh, Belgium uh, uh, company also. And they also work with uh, all the data is also uh, with OpenStreetMap. So the idea is that we're going to really build, kind of uh, work together on if somebody adds a new wheelchair accessible route in Rutu, that it will be directly visible also in our app. And if we add, the idea is also that we're going to work on navigation for wheelchair users and that our, our users can say, okay, this is not accessible, and then route you can change it. So that's kind of the idea uh, in the future. But for now, these are just um, 
some routes that we use for from the government, which are already checked by wheelchair users, by the groups, uh, that is really accessible. But the fun thing is that you can see here on this one, the roll routes, uh, the map one. The third one is that you can also, these uh, routes are also a category on their own. So you can activate that route, and then you can say, I, I want to see where are the parking spots. For instance, here are activated where all the uh, benches are to sit. So if you say, okay, I want to do a, a route, and then uh, I want to sit, or I want to have a drink, uh, or I need to go to the toilets, then you can actually also see where the closest one is. Um, this is a little bit our process of how we add or how we want to add uh, new locations or change locations. So in general, I'll start with this. So in general, there's a category, we call it unmeasured locations. And these are just, this is just a list of all uh, buildings, um, all data from uh, OpenStreetMap. Um, and <coughs> so these are all the restaurants and cafes and which, which don't have any accessibility information in them. So the idea is that instead of starting from scratch that we, that we did, like location and this is a restaurant, now we're just going to, you just pick one of the, you say, okay, I want to add information to this one. You click on it, you do edit, um, and then you get this list. So um, we're still working on it, but the idea is that all the information which is, which is available in OpenStreetMap will already be filled in. So you can see what data is already filled in. And then you can, if you say, okay, it's not correct, uh, you can change that data or you can add, we also add some other uh, things uh, that are, which is not access, which is not available now. For instance, about the entrance, what's the door width of the entrance, how many steps are there, these kind of things about the toilets. And then you can also add uh, pictures. Um, but you see, this is kind of, we try to make this very complicated data uh, and all the tagging, we try to put this in a kind of very user-friendly, very simple, Just you just fill in, and then um, all the information, uh, if you filled in everything correct, all the information is sent uh, back to OpenStreetMap, and then you directly see uh, that location has a, is changed. There's also a possibility here, for instance, uh, if there's a location which doesn't exist, which uh, we saw, we did some tests and sometimes locations uh, uh, don't exist in it, in OpenStreetMap, and then you also have the, um, the possibility to uh, add new locations from scratch. So then you just have to say, okay, you have to pinpoint where it is, and then you just add um, all the information to it. So maybe for you guys, I cannot explain all the tagging, but we'd made a kind of, or we started uh, making a proposal. Uh, so if you scan this one, um, you can find it. It's, um, it's called uh, accessibility, I think. Um, but this is kind of an idea of these are all the, all the places uh, we want to add and kind of uh, where we're working like, uh, which are all the tagging that we have to use for that? Don't know. I will. I will also on at the end. I will just uh, put it open that you can. <coughs> so this is kind of an example of that um, of that proposal. Um, I will not explain everything, but m the main things that we want to work on is. We want to add things to the entrance key, where we also add the door width of the entrance, the number of steps, is there a wheelchair ramp, these kind of things. Um, there's also a new um, one we want to add, a new place, which is um, a changing place. 
Um, I don't have the time to explain everything, but that's kind of a new uh, place. It's kind of an, an... We have some in Belgium now. If you go to the UK, there's like thousands of them because that's in every shop there has to be one. Um, but that's actually kind of a big space where you have a toilet for wheelchair users. There's a changing place. There's a shower. So you can just... Uh, also for we have like the baby changing places but this is also for big children for uh, and also just um, just people uh. Uh, the other things is some adding some more information about the toilets for instance what's the door width of the toilet space uh, how many space do we have in front of the toilet next to the toilet um, and then also adding some more information about the elevator uh, again, what's the door width of the elevator? What's the depth? What's the width? Um, and then adding also from the parking spaces also the width, the length. So it, in general, it's it's about the spaces of entrance and and um, so so yeah, you can see. So this is one uh, we took. We added all these kind of things as an example. You can also we we put a link in our proposal so you can check it. But you see, if you just have in the editor of OpenStreetMap, it looks like this, and then this data looks like this in our app. So it's kind of uh, an ID to see. Um, maybe very quickly. So we're also working on uh, some new IDs, uh, which is uh, for cities. We want to work on a like a kind of a data platform, a management platform where cities can make like their own dashboards where they can filter through data um, to see uh, which streets need some more work or uh, where can we add uh, uh, more accessibility data. Um, I can quickly show you a project we did. This is only one minute um, to end. But this is a, 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 a thing we did for Lisbon City this summer. And this is kind of a first idea of a very simple user-friendly um, way of making a dashboard for cities. So the first is you just uh, put your title, then you select the categories you want to add to your map. Uh, and then you, this is kind of a kind of a filter, a sorting place where you say, oh, I only want to see this street. Uh, or only restaurants with the door width more than this. Um, and if you filter that, you say, okay, I want to add a map to that, which is full screen. And then I also want to add a list to that, which is half screen. And, and I would also like to add a chart, which is also half. So the idea is then that you can share this um, dashboard on the on the website of your city and when we add look uh, information it will just change so it's kind of interactive uh, thing um, so this that's kind of the idea also we did some stuff around AI and machine learning also um, but if you want to know more about uh, what we do you can always send me an email or call me we have a website <coughs> but not that updated we have to work on it uh, and this is also again the the proposal uh qr code yes <laughs> thank you robin for your proposal i i know for, for sure there are questions i would like just to ask i saw that for which platform it is available the the, the application and if it's all open source is based on some part of proprietary code and then just a reminder for all, at 1.30, there will be the group photo uh, at the bar. So after lunch, there will be the photo, just if someone maybe for the question will leave. So uh, the idea is for our new app, we're, we're building it in Flutter. So we will have it in iOS and in Android. But we're also, after that, we'll work, going to work on a web version, which then for other platforms or just on the website, you can use. Um, yeah, like all the data will be directly hosted in OpenStreetMap. So if cities or other apps want to use the data, they can use it. Um, but I don't think our app ourselves um, is really open source, but we try to 
put as many as possible like this project I showed you from Lisbon we, this is an open source you can access all all the code from that uh, we did also did some research about AI and machine learning which is also open source um, so yeah we try to really uh, do this as much as possible uh, where it's possible for us <laughs> if there are other questions yeah so uh, so the app isn't available yet. No. Yeah, and uh, there will be a translation to different languages. I hope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I, I've been trying to find your app and didn't found it. And uh, no, all no. yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, and uh, I just had one question in particular. Like, uh, for instance, uh, sometimes you have uh, an accessibility parking lot, which length depends on how much space the other drivers left to you. Like, they can park a little bit closer to the signage or a little bit further away. How, how would you deal with, like, that type of... Uh, Things or maybe it's not a not a case here in Belgium. I hope so. But that's very much the case, like Canada. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For example, the um, uh, yeah, I forgot the first part. <laughs> uh, ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. So, yeah, the idea was kind of uh, that we would be ready in September already, but <laughs> that was uh, impossible. We did, um, with Joost and with some people, we did the first test with the app. Uh, and then we saw there was a lot of uh, problems that the app destroyed uh, data in OpenStreetMap. So, um, so, <laughs> so that was a very good test. It was a small test, so we could, we could change it back. But now we're the uh, the developers are working on uh, changing on changing that. So hopefully, I mean, the idea is that <laughs> I was hoping that we could already launch it today. But um, hopefully next month or beginning next year, uh, we're quite close though. Um, and then and for the parking spots, so that's uh, normally here in Belgium or in Maine, we only measure the ones which have like the accessible logo. Normally, this should be three and a half meters wide and then five or six meters in length. Uh, that, that's not always uh, <laughs> true. Um, but also, we don't want to add too much information. So that's why we also use a uh, picture. If you take pictures, people can kind of see. Um, and also, in your profile, you kind of, you can set it a little bit wider, you know, um but yeah it, it's it's i think it's a it's a problem everywhere but um it's really hard to to solve that with an app or with data yeah. um <coughs> like some number but if i can't create the accessibility spot without uh putting down the exact like length when in reality the length really, really isn't defined, it's like a bit of a conflict between my, uh, how it's called, <laughs> between trying to add the spot and not adding just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it will be a learning curve for us also, eh? and for the, like, how can we, Maybe we can improve on new tagging, or, or like how can we make the app better, or how can we improve also how we uh, do things in OpenStreetMap. Um, but yeah, in general, I think what we the interesting thing with our app is that we have the users, which they can say we really measure with the measuring tape. So if you measure a parking spot, it's like really on the centimeters, you know. So most of the data that we do from will be kind of really exactly if you if you put it on the map it's um 
it's more difficult to do it yes yeah 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 but i mean it's it's a learning curve i think i think that's for all the projects here um but i think it's an interesting that's why we're here and want to kind of involve uh, more of the people uh, working on that um yeah so two things sorry so please join our proposal discussion uh, if you have any input please 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 help us and also there's still the uh, thing that we have to do is import our existing data uh, in OpenStreetMap. We have been talking with Jost and with other people around it, but it's kind of a data set of, of 20,000 locations. Um, so <laughs> it would be a shame to not use the data, but yes. Yeah, one more. Uh, so I work at Ruchu, so of course I'm thinking about routings. So uh, how feasible do you think it is at the moment with the current state of the data in OpenStreetMap to make uh, a routing that uh, takes uh, makes the most wheelchair accessible routes between A and B? Is that possible or not at the moment? So that is if it's not saying. Um, I think at the, at the moment, not really, not in, I think there's some projects that are starting to measure uh, uh, the width of, of like sidewalks, but I actually handed in a proposal with you guys uh, last month uh, to get some funding <laughs> in Belgium to actually, the idea is that we would measure all the, all the widths of the, and all the crossings of one city, for instance, Antwerp. Um, and then we can actually make a routing system uh, for specific for wheelchair users in route you, but also in on wheels app. So uh, hopefully we get that project, <laughs> but that, that's definitely where we, that we want to go. And for us, it's really important that we don't want to do everything on our own. So we really want to, if there's other apps or other people with projects, please contact us. We really want to work and share what we did and our data with you guys, and we really want to work together. So, yeah. Just a comment on that on Open Route Service. This is another uh, very popular instrument. There is a wheelchair profile for users. There is some kind of fixed element, so it's not very customable, but it's already usable. And as Wikimedia Italia, we create a tool that combines, maybe most of you will know, WellMap and this routing. It's just limited on a, on a short area, but it's a combination of that. It could be something interesting to implement it. Uh, just to comment on that, uh, I'm from Antur in Norway. Uh, we are developing an open trip planner uh, uh, engine, uh, which fully supports uh, uh, routing with uh, wheelchairs and uh, other uh, things. Uh, we can't use that in production in Norway uh, because we are lacking a lot of data. But uh, uh, it works very nice uh, in also city center where we have uh, data with stairs and uh, barriers. So uh, we then we will not start to collect data next year, but uh, maybe in 2025 we will start to collect data for the whole of Norway. Great. Wait, wait, wait. So this is kind of the reason we opted for OpenStreetMap, uh, because if there's other interesting projects adding information or doing things with OpenStreetMap data, that we can work together and. Uh, share everything, so. Yeah, I, I guess more of a comment than a question, oh, sorry. Uh, is that it's, um, so currently it's entirely based on nodes, uh, so, or, well, or, or on the POI. So all the tags go on a single POI, which is, I, I think there's really not really another option because otherwise you get into indoor mapping and you can't do that, I think, in a, in a easy way with a with a mobile app but it is going to be a problem at some point uh, so it's in the future there's gonna be gonna have to be other solutions and then in uh, the uh, uh, real map thing within map complete uh, does try <laughs> uh, does try to to address some of those things but I yeah I think for the kind of app that that on wheels tries to be it's it, yeah, it's not there yet but at some point it's gonna be a problem
Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, well, we have we don't have the financial possibility to make uh, very big things. So this is a start. Uh, the we made our app very flexible in the way that we can add, uh, and also the connection with OpenStreetMap. So we can, if there's new interesting data in OpenStreetMap, uh, we can just add maybe a new uh, tag to it. Or and our dreams is also that we can add instead of only nodes, then maybe when indoor mapping is starting to pop up that we can also we also add that um also routing so the idea is that whenever there's new things that we want to really work on that and uh work together with other projects and add new things you know this is just a start this is not the final product this is the starting product so okay we are quite if there are a few questions maybe just ask directly to to robin so Thank you so much for your presentation and we have a free for lunch. Thank you.